had a very bitter and problematic relationship with numbers. I don't like numbers, and numbers certainly don't like me back. But I always thought also that mathematics is not useful or beneficial. My father would disagree. As an economics professor, he would always say that mathematics is life, and not liking life could be a big problem for you, Esteban. He would get bitter, and he would laugh at my situation as well. However, I couldn't relate mathematics to daily life. I mean, they would always present us with some numbers and expect us to come up with some other numbers accordingly. But what did, what did those numbers count? Did those numbers count apples? Did they count books, toys? No, they were just numbers. Or were they? Some of you here who know me might know that I am not at all a maths person. I am more of a humanities person, more of a literature person. Um, so now, I would like to see all the people's hands who think that they are number people. Do you associate yourself with numbers? Oh, there are quite a few. Um, all, the, all the word people who associate themselves with humanities. Yeah, we're the cooler ones, you know. <laughs> now, afterwards, I met game theory. And here, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of my good friend, game theory. Um, so, afterwards, I would hope that if I asked you, are you a game theory person, you would all be raising your hands. Now, we know that decision-making as everything in life has its different aspects to it. Reality is never certain. It can be tampered with. And the outcomes of, the, uh, of our uh, decisions are always shaped by the decisions of others. So one might see reality white. One might see it black. I see it rather olive green because it is my favorite color and because everybody has to see it a different shade. But this does not mean that we shouldn't consider how the others will proceed while making our own decisions. So, because human is a social creature, thinking about the others is really important. Right now I'm going to try to apply game theory to life, to daily social life itself. So I'm going to take mathematics and apply it to reality, daily life. So the first time that I met game theory, I was eight or nine years old. And I'm talking as if we're in a graduation ceremony or a funeral, funeral right now. But the first time I met, I met game theory, I was eight or nine years old. And I secretly sneaked into my father's room and looked at his computer. And I saw that he had made many, many presentations, but only one of them interested me, just because of the word game. I was a child, you know. And when I clicked on that presentation, I saw that everything in that presentation looked like games. There were animations, there were pictures, there were tables. However, I just thought, why would my father teach games? I am the fun one. I am better at games than my father. So I said, well, I have to discover this. I have just recently actually discovered that game theory is actually the study of math mathematical models of conflict and cooperation between rational and intelligent decision makers. So, if this is complicated, we could just say that game theory is studying strategic decision making. So game theory essentially shows us how to proceed in life, how to make our next move, how to get the most suitable outcome. Um, so, I was going through my father's computer again. I can feel my father's eyes directed at me and he's going, I didn't know that, I'm going to talk to her after a speech. Uh, but I saw a video in which John Nash, a very important person, um, rediscovers governing dynamics, which is a concept, a very important concept in game theory. So, let's watch. Recall the lessons of Adam Smith. Father of modern economics. In, uh, in competition, individual ambition serves the common good. Exactly. 
Every man for himself, gentlemen. Yeah, and those who strike out are stuck with their friends. I'm not going to strike out. You can lead a blonde to water, but you can't make a drink. I don't think he's like that. Alright, will. She's looking over him. Right, she's looking at Ash. Alright, he may have the upper hand now, but wait until he opens his mouth. <laughs> 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 Adam Smith needs revision. What are you talking about? If we all go for the blonde. They block each other. Not a single one of us is going to get her. So then we go for her friends. But they will all give us the cold shoulder because nobody likes to be second choice. But what if no one goes for the blonde? We don't get in each other's way. And we don't insult the other girls. And so we will win. Adam Smith said, best result comes from everyone in the group doing what's best for himself, right? That's what he said. That's right. Incomplete. Incomplete. Okay. Because the best result will come from everyone in the group doing what's best for himself. And the group. Ash, this is some way for you to get the blonde on your own. You can go to hell. Governor Dynamics, gentlemen. Governor Dynamics. Adam Smith. He's wrong. Here we go. Thank you. <laughs> so, as we saw in this video, John Nash took Governor Dynamics into a whole new level. He took Adam Smith's concepts and added so much to it. In his level, he said, maximizing your own profit is on payoff, is not possible without thinking about the other people's profit. In this case, the group is just a bunch of guys in a bar trying to get with a blonde, but uh, that could be applied to every situation in life. So if everyone follows um, their own strategy that they consider to be the best and does not look around and think about what the others have decided, they might actually end up with a zero in their hands. So following the blonde in this case really did not help uh, any of them, did it? But if they knew that uh, deciding according to, according to the other people's strategies was the best way to approach, then they would choose the brunette and they would all have a woman in their arms that night. So the important thing here is that societal conditions, the conditions of the society, and um, uh, the people around us actually change our way of proceeding with our decision making. And if, they on if we only follow our own way, we might actually end up with nothing in our hands. So there is one other aspect that I want to talk about, in which we can see double think and consideration of other people. Um, it is called the prisoner's dilemma. Oh, excuse me, I forgot to show this to you. So this is a presentation that I prepared that showed what happened in the video. Um, these are, yeah, they're getting the uh, brunette. Okay, so the prisoner's dilemma is actually another concept that we should talk about. In the prisoner's dilemma, we now have two robbers who get arrested. One is John Nash, and one is Essin. So Essin is going to be in a prison cell with John Nash talking about governing dynamics and strategies. That's right. So three situations would be expected to ensue. First, John could uh, confess the crime and Essin could deny, in which point John would be released because he confessed, uh, he revealed Essin's guilt and Essin would get three years of jail sentence because she lied. Secondly, they could both uh, deny the <coughs> crimes, from which they would get a year uh, of jail sentence because of substantial evidence, some substantial evidence. And thirdly, they could both confess, at which point they would both get two years of jail sentence. But because John Nash is a rational and clever decision maker, 
he would stand there and think. Well, if Essen confessed, then I should also confess, because I don't want three years in jail. And he would also say, if Essen denied, I should again deny, because I want to be released. If Essen is as clever as John Nash, what she would do would be to do the same. So, at which case, the third situation would ensue. So, if they are both intelligent and clever decision makers, um, the, only the third situation uh, would occur. And this situation, in this situation, any change that would uh, lead, any change that they make, would lead to worse consequences. So, this is their best individual payoff. So, there is a dilemma that is presented right here that is going to help us double think. So, John and Estin could either collude, make a collaboration, in which they would say, we are both going to deny. However, if Estin outsmarted John Nash and said, no, I am going to confess, John Nash would be at a risk. And there is the other point to the dilemma, in which they could just follow reason and confess without the risk of getting three years of jail sentence. Um, so, we could also apply this concept to the societal level and just call these people uh, pharmaceutical companies. So these companies, while making their choices on how to price their drugs, they would consider the rival company's choices as well. Because um, the best outcome would come if they both chose low prices. Because both would not go bankrupt and none would attract all the market. So they would have moderate revenue in their hands afterwards. However, if they made a collusion again, if they collaborated with each other and chose to impose high prices, both high prices to their drugs, they would get more revenue. But what would happen in that situation? If one company, as Essen did, outsmarted the other and said, no, I will not follow this collusion, and I will cause the other company to go bankrupt because I'm going to lower my prices, there would again be a risk at one company's hands. And also, how would high, high prices affect the society? If the society is forced to pay unnecessarily high prices for drugs, they would not want to allow these companies to collaborate and try to prevent their collaboration if they are responsible and thoughtful individuals. So, Again, we are represented with a dilemma in our hands. The companies could either benefit the society and have lower revenues without any risk of going bankrupt, or they could have high revenues, not care about the society, and not consider their risks, and the fact that the society has the power in their hands to uh, prevent the collaboration they made to have high prices for their drugs. So in the end, uh, we all can understand here that game theory is the way that shows you how to proceed in life, how to take the next step. I'm not saying that you should apply game theory to your life all the time and make tables when you're choosing what to wear in the morning. However, we can now understand that you should think before you make a decision. Before you take your next step forward, just think for a second, double think, only think, stay in a dilemma, go through a dilemma, but in the end, empathize as well, but in the end, think before you decide. Think about other people's decisions. Just look around you for a second and see who has made what decision and proceed accordingly. Think about the society, about what would benefit the society, what the society can get out of your decision. Please, before you proceed, think, you are not alone in this world. You are not the only clever ones. When making a decision, don't be impulsive and think that you are the only clever ones. Thank you.